subject of this telecast is a movie and an historical event. The movie was produced by Warner Brothers. Our Lady of Fatima. We asked Mr. Jack Warner if he would permit us to show a section of that classic film on this particular show. And the graciousness and the immediacy and the spontaneity of his ascent has made us indeed his debtor. The historical event is that upon which this particular film was based. And it is of the historical event, first of all, that we would speak before we show you the movie. The event itself might be called almost the birthday of the modern world. Because it was on that day that the forces of good and evil seemed to reach their peak. Our modern world, with its great crises, began on the date of October 13th, 1917. We will take you quickly to three cities and show you what happened on that day, first in Moscow, secondly in Rome, and third in a little village in Portugal called Fatima. October 13th, 1917, Moscow. Maria Alexandrovich, a young Russian noble lady, was teaching religion to a group of 200 children in the Church of the Iberian Virgin. And suddenly there was a distraction. Horsemen entered the front door, down the middle aisle, vaulted the communion rail, destroyed the icons, the statuary, the altar, and then attacked the children, killing many of them. Maria Alexandrovich ran out of the church screaming. She knew that there was an imminent revolution by the communists, and she went to Lenin, whom she knew, and she said, a most terrible thing has happened. I was teaching catechism to my children. Horsemen came in charged them and killed some of them. Lenin said, I know it. I sent them. It was one of the events that heralded at the beginning of the terrible communist revolution that has since harassed the world. Rome. October 13th, 1917. The same hour, midday. Church bells are ringing all through the city. It was a joyful event. A bishop was being consecrated. His name, Eugenio Pacelli. A man who then was not very well known but one day would come face to face with this great revolutionary force and would become the greatest spiritual force in the world against it. After his consecration on that 13th day of October 1917, he went to Munich. At that particular time, the communists were very strong. They were under the leadership in Munich of Karl Liebknecht, and then one of those curious women that communism spawned. Rosa Luxemburg. And an order went out to kill 325 so-called enemies. And one of them was this same Archbishop Eugenio Pacelli. The commander of the Southern Communist Army, whose name was Eiler, Brother Seiler, and his aide de camp, Rongratz, brought in some soldiers with hand grenades. Seiler himself was armed. They got into the house by a kind of a ruse, and they hid behind a curtain, waiting for the footfall of this man of whom we're speaking. And as he walked down the corridor, Tyler was hiding behind a curtain. And he threw out his gun to shoot him. And the gun struck 
the pectoral cross on his breast, fell to the floor. Archbishop Pacelli reached over and picked it up, handed it back to Siler, said, here's your gun. Kill him if you wish. I am only interested in the souls of my people. Siler and Bron Grants went back and they were unable to explain why they did not get their man. They could not explain why they were haunted by that lean figure. There was only one thing they did know, and that was that from that time on, that man would be afraid of absolutely nothing in all the world. And that man became Pius XII. And that pectoral cross that he was wearing that night, I am wearing now. Pius XII, he gave it to his esteemed friend, his eminence Cardinal Spellman, who this evening kindly gave it to me when I told him I wished to speak of this incident. October 13th, 1917, there's a little village in Fatima where three little children, Maria, Asinta, and Francis, were gathered expecting a revelation. They had said that Mary, the mother of God, had appeared to them. It was not surprising, of course, if she had. It might very well have been. The Lord came through her. Through her, he worked his first miracle. And then from the cross, he commended us all to her with his kind words, Behold thy mother. The children said that the lady had appeared to her before. Appeared to them before on the 13th of April, and May, and June, and July, 19th of August, and the 13th of September. And in the course of the revelation, something very interesting was said, which goes to show there's something more important in this world than politics. It was said by the lady that this world war will end in a little over another year. Now remember the date, October 13th, 1917. We went to war that year on Good Friday, our country. The war did end in a little over another year on the 11th of November, 1918. And then the lady told the children to tell the world that there would come a great era of peace to the world if the world would only return to God. And Russia would be converted. But, she said, if the world does not return to God, at the close of the next pontificate, that is to say, in the year 1936, there will be the beginnings of a second world war in Spain. So evidently, heaven regarded that civil war as the beginning of World War II. And then she said, but to prevent it, I ask that men do penance and prayer and return again to God. If they do not do penance, there will come World War II which will be more terrible than World War I. Nations will be destroyed, cities blotted out, the good will suffer persecution, Russia will spread its errors and persecution throughout the world, and the Holy Father himself will suffer much. And then she gave a word of hope, but in the end, God will triumph. The Second World War need not have come. It was unnecessary. Wars are... It was unnecessary. Wars are not just made by politics. Wars are crises and judgments that come upon us because of the way we live. But there had to be some sign that this revelation was true. 
and 70,000 people gathered at Fatima this particular day with the children. Now, what is interesting is that most of them were unbelievers. Portugal in those days was anarchistic, communistic, atheistic, anti-clerical. They came out of curiosity. Some of them doubted, most of them doubted that anything would happen, but the children said that the lady told them that there would be a great miracle, which would be a proof that she had actually appeared. And the proof was what was called the miracle of the sun. The sun, according to the testimony of these 70,000 people, and also according to the testimony of the atheistic anarchistic newspapers, which I read and which indeed were very interesting, because they said this actually happened, but we hope that nobody will interpret it in a divine way. And the sun seemed almost to detach itself. And to become like a great silver ball. And then shooting out sparks in all directions. It almost precipitated itself, or so it seemed. Precipitated itself upon the people. And they shouted to God for prayer. Prayer and supplication and in sorrow and in contrition. Miracles took place in the sights of them all. No, it rained all the time. When this phenomenon had taken place three times, everyone found that their clothes were dry. From that time on, Fatima became kind of a gathering place of all of the people of the world who believed that peace was made somewhere else than at the tables of politicians. Namely, peace was made by prayer and reparation and expiation and sacrifice. On October 13th, 1951, I was at Fatima, and there were one million people. They gathered the night before, and all night long it rained. One of those cold rains on those, one of these Portuguese mountaintops. But they stood and they knelt they prayed for the peace of the world. I stayed with them till three o'clock, and I was one of the few that had a cot. I went in and laid down. I was tired. But you could not sleep. The luxury of a cot. And here are a million people, most of whom are walked. 50, 75, and 100 miles over during several days in order to do penance. So the only thing to do was to get out of bed and pray with them through the night. And then the next morning, pray for the peace of the world. And when Warner Brothers did this particular film, they left the realm of imagination and technique and they went to Fatima that particular night and the close of the particular film, which you are about to witness, shows the crowd that particular night that I was there. Now, the film. Oh, wait. Our lady was there. I didn't see her, but I know it. Oh, three crazy children. We were cheated. The sign shows the sign. Oh. I knew you'd come to us, dear lady. What do you want? I want to tell you that the war is going to end soon, and the soldiers will return to their homes. Do not fear. 
in the end, God will triumph. You said you'd tell us who you are. I am the Lady of the Rosary. Queen of the Most Holy Rosary. Where's our lady? We haven't seen her. A child talks to the empty air. We call her, we heard her. Some sort of miracle out of that, or this farce will become a tragedy. Well, I can't say we didn't try to stop it. We've been cheated. We've been lied to. Nobody talks to the children. Holy oh, Mother, you promised to give us a miracle so the people will believe us. Fatima, in 1917, erected this simple arch. There now stands a magnificent basilica. And on October 13th, 1951, a million people from all over the world gathered here to do homage to Our Lady of Fatima. is alive with a million white handkerchiefs waving an affectionate greeting to the white lady waving an affectionate greeting to the white lady of peace as I stood there on that altar overlooking that great crowd of one million people all of them waving the white handkerchiefs as white flags of purity. 
in tribute to peace and to the Lady of Peace. My mind left that white square and went to the red square of Moscow, where there were red flags, tied red in the blood of the victims. Somehow I felt that on this day, there was the great crisis between the white square of Fatima and the red square of Moscow. Somehow or other, one felt certain and secure about peace. If we could just magnify this crowd and these petitions and this spirit throughout the world. And in my imagination, I could see a great change coming over the hammer and the sickle. I could see that hammer that had beaten down so many homes and profaned so many sanctuaries. I could see it being held aloft by millions of men, and looking now like a cross. And that sickle, which the communists use to cut human life like unripe wheat, I now saw as changing its figure and its symbolism and becoming, as the book of the Apocalypse said, the moon under the lady's feet. This is the way to peace. World War II need not have happened if men had returned to God. World War III need not happen. And it will not happen if we as a nation return again to God. If there is a Cold War here and a Cold War anywhere else, it is because our hearts and our souls are not on flame with love of God.